Hi, this is your Sabdul Bharti and we are here at KubeCon in Cloudy Con in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today we have with us Bobby Desimony, CEO and founder of Pomerium. Bobby, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Since this is the first time you and I are talking, so I would love to know a bit about what problem you saw in the market sure. which led to the creation of this company and what do you folks do? Sure. So um, first what we do, we're an identity aware access proxy which means that we um, are able to add authentication and authorization to every single request. Um, so as it relates to the problem we saw in the market, we had seen a lot of folks do internal access via things like VPNs or other like tunneling based methods and there are some security challenges, access challenges around that, which I'd love to get into today. How is this space different from the traditional IEM space or is the scheme space? Yeah, I mean, there's always a lot of overlap with identity and access management. I, I think we definitely use identity as one of the factors to make authentication, excuse me, authorization decisions. So we integrate with all the major uh, identity providers. So in that way, we touch that ecosystem. But Pomerium is much more focused on authorization and the capabilities we bring to bear there, which what I mean by that is we can authorize a request and we do it on every single request based off not only identity, but user, um, like whether they're in a good standing in your HR system, uh, device identity, and uh, device posture, things like that. And when it comes to identity authorization, is it for humans or is it also machines, software? Great question. Primarily it's for humans. So like north, south access, if we're going to use that vernacular, interactive sessions. And we do that for all applications and services in like Kubernetes workloads or any other really, as well as to say the Kubernetes control plane or API. So yeah. Excellent, thank you. Now also talk about, uh, when we talk about, you know, of course, authorization here, uh, is it more becoming more challenging complicated in the cloud space versus when folks used to do a lot of things in their own private cloud or data centers? Uh, I think it's complicated in both, for better or worse. Uh, I think each has its unique challenges. Um, I think it's bridging both cloud, Kubernetes, VM, all those environments and have a centralized uh, uh, kind of control plane, if you will, to, to access those things. So um, each has their unique challenges. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Now let's talk about how, when teams deal with authorization, what kind of challenges they face that you folk come to address? There's a few different challenges our customers typically face with respect to authorization. First, the biggest one is um, consolidating many different types of authentication authorization to a single uh, platform. I would say one of the biggest challenges is Usually there is some sort of legacy deployment uh, where there's no authentication or authorization at all. And so maybe there's no one, you know, it's an internal app that no longer has a developer and it's an external app you don't have control of. Pomerium can provide authorization to that. Um, if it's a, you know, cloud-based or more modern application, it's about, like I said, unifying uh, authorization policies across the entire fleet of infrastructure. Excellent. Uh, and can you also talk about like when it comes to once again authorization, folks join in, teams move around, and within companies there are different teams. Within teams there are different people who need authorization. And within the same company they have different environments and then there are different clouds, you know, so that is there. So what is the scope of here? Is it for teams, across the teams, across the clouds? Can you talk about that? Sure, it's across all of the above. And I think you've broken down like a very clear way that naturally people think about authorization. Um, I, I would say that one of Pomerium's capabilities is to be able to support our customers where they are and how they think about uh, access control uh, and layering it in. Um, of course, like in a centralized way for security, but also kind of a, a capability I'm really proud of at Pomerium is that we enable self-service. So teams can um, do their own access control within the parameters of a broader security context. 
One more challenge that happens, uh, I don't know how much is that in the authorization space is that people join, team join, that's good. People leave. Sometimes they don't even know what it, and they might join another company, they might go rogue. Do you tackle that issue as well? And how do you automate that? Sure, totally. Uh, employee offboarding or contractor offboarding is a huge topic. We obviously do that by staying as in sync as possible with the upstream identity provider. But I think another important thing is there are other um, important contextual sources of truth. You might want to get that type of data because more often than not, offboarding data is not going to be in your identity provider, but maybe in your HR system. Pomerium is able to pull that data in to make sure that there is no lag between when an employee is offboarded into when uh, they're actually offboarded from the systems. I think another difference is between Pomerium and like native OIDC or OAuth integration is Pomerium is able to block access the millisecond that happens. There's no caching or lag time for that. Some of these major cloud providers, you know, hyperscalers, they have their own identity. So do you complement them or do you complete, uh, compete with them or you just sit on top of them? Yeah, we're complementary and we definitely sit on top. Like we're, we're happy to use that data as another source of contextual information to make policy decisions. Uh, so it's, it's just another data source to us. And you work across all cl cloud providers or you work with specific ones? Yeah, we work with all cloud providers, um, on-prem, hybrid. I think one of our strengths is being able to be deployed across a very heterogeneous infrastructure environment, which like if we're being totally honest and we are at KubeCon, most organizations have a very heterogeneous environment still. Uh, now let's talk about, we talked a lot about technology side, let's talk about the company side. As before the interview started, we are talking about the companies around four years old. Talk about how you have seen the growth of the company and what is driving that growth. Yeah, That's a, I'll try to give a short answer to that question to encapsulate four years, but I think the early company started first as an open source project. So um, the company wasn't much more than me and a, you know, a dog in a garage, so to speak, um, and a very small core team of developers as we built out the open source product. Um, more recently, we've leaned into um, some of the big enterprise asks that our early adopters have asked for and built a commercial business around those asks. And that's what we're leaning into right now. Um, we are a venture-backed company and just did our Series A. And what kind of growth are you planning for the company? So something we're really excited about in terms of growth is Pomerium has traditionally been a fully on-premise product. We recently announced something called Pomerium Zero, which is a hybrid version of Pomerium. And we're seeing a lot of pretty great traction there from the community in just terms of like doubling and tripping our overall users. This question may not be suitable in this use case, but we are seeing Gen AI's adoption a lot. And Gen AI is solving a lot of problem, but it's also creating a lot of problem when it comes to whole identity. How do you see that as a challenge? Is it within the radar or premium what you folks are doing? Yeah, I mean, it's touching everything, right? So the few ways that we're thinking about LLMs or generative AI or like any of these topics is, okay, so first in the product, uh, we're definitely using it in a way that feels truly additive, I hope, which is, uh, with machine learning, we can sit and monitor incoming requests and automatically create policies and routes for our users that they don't now have to manually type in, they can just adopt, making that easier. Um, I think on the challenges side, this is hopefully where we're supportive of customers, which is like the truth of creating these models and working with these models is it's incredibly sensitive data and the tools to operate, monitor, inspect them usually don't have any authentication or authorization behind them. And so Pomerium plays a critical role. We're working with some foundational model company, companies right now to secure their environment. So on the challenges side, hopefully we're helping out on the security and the opportunity side, you know, it's helping our product like many others. Bobby, once again, thank you so much for joining me today. Talk about the company, the problem you're solving for ecosystem. Thanks for, you know, great insight there. And I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. It was a great conversation. Thank you so much.